uh, what is uh, it's as taqwa, taqwa. You Muslims, students of Quran and the life of our Prophet, you will know taqwa. You will understand the meaning of taqwa. Allah has revealed to us through our Prophet Muhammad that the soul has two agents working to help man go to the destiny or to the purpose God created him for. One is taqwa, the other one is fujur. Fujur. And if you are alert mind, alert minded students and have studied, you have connected fujur with fajr. Fajr. The time in the morning that we get up for prayer, what wakes us up out of our beds, the interest, the interest or the importance that is designed in our religion to be the first to awake us from our beds. Fajr. We make Fajr prayer. It has only two rakats, two sections of prayer, two rakats. And it is this fujur that is one of two in the main agents that's propelling our life force, propelling us, pushing us to draw, go forward for progress in our life for the benefit of humanity, of the human community, or the human community. The fujur. The fujur is exposed to be influenced, misguided, defected. But the taqwa is not. The taqwa is not. The taqwa is the constant agent. The fujur is the moving, evolving agent. Like the rising of the sun before it appears, there is the dawn. There's fajr time. The, the sun has not appeared yet. In fact, Fajr comes, first comes, when it appears to still be dark outside. And it shows as two parallel lines on the eastern horizon. And they are running parallel perfectly together. Black and white. The black of human nature, the white of human conscience. Oh no, I'm not, I'm not the show business man. If you came here for hype, you won't get it. And by the way, I'm happy to hear that Minister Farrakhan has been improving steadily, steadily. And I pray to Allah, I pray to Allah, and I pray to Allah now that he delivers the message in Detroit. Why? Because I know he's the best qualified among them to deliver the message in Detroit. I don't know if they know it because you know, they like that coal too, a lot of them or whatever him. They just like that mountain of Stoker coal. But I hope they understand, especially their leaders, I hope they understand that Minister Farrakhan is the best qualified of them. He can attract the people, he can hold the people, and he has made a lot of improvement for the nation of Islam under his leadership, under his leadership. I sent two statements to him. I was invited to both the Jummah to join them for Jummah prayer. In fact, they asked me to leave the Jummah. 
and I was invited to the Sunday address that they are having at the same time we are having this address. They are just an hour um, um, behind us. So whatever time it is now, it's an hour later, later for them. Let's see. I got a nice watch here one of you all gave me. It's real nice. I only wear it on very special occasions. Yes, so it's, it's close to uh, 4.15 there, close to 4.15. Never forget that we were formed. Actually, we were created. And that model that had its own language, and for those that in Detroit, that has its own language, that model that has its own language called Temple of Islam. We were put in a special language environment. Don't see the walls or the physical structure and everything like we have here. Don't see that as the real temple of Islam. That's not the real temple of Islam. Those walls can't do anything for you. The real temple of Islam is the language and the communication that that language brought to your intelligence and your behavior. Hmm? That's the real temple. That's why I say temple in animation. Continuing, continuing now, the definition of nous, common sense alertness. To help this explanation for the term nous, the term nostalgia should be understood. Nostalgia is inherent, inborn, in your own nature when you come into the world. Inherent as an expression having its origin in the soul or in the nous. Nous and soul are not the exact same, they're not the same. But soul is the whole life. Your soul is the whole life. Scientists are students of the soul. Like uh, the Greek philosopher Socrates and many others in different religions. I want to share this with you right now. This particular focus that we have right now on the, on the human life in its best nature, in its best value, is in the religion that are really out of the family, are out of the Abraham, Abrahamic families of faiths. Judaism, Christianity, Islam. That's the, that's the Abrahamic family of faiths. But also the religion of Buddhism, the religion of Hinduism, and even others that have branched off from some of these larger ones. They all have the same perception of the original man, the black man. The black man is not a physical man. The black man is every man. When some racist Prejudices, prejudice, prejudice came out in the presence of the prophet because one of his companions or followers in his immediate circle of friends or circle of people, he spoke derogatively, derogatively of Belial. 
And the prophet said, we all are Belial. Meaning, racist fool, if you call, think he's inferior because he's black, you don't know the meaning of black in scripture. He all is, we all are black. What does the gospel say of Mary when the angel came to inform her that she was going to give birth to a special child? Peace be on the mother and her child. The gospel says that the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit overshadowed her. Preacher, you know a spirit doesn't cast a shadow. The Holy Spirit overshadowed her, and she became pregnant with child. That's it. Yes, sir. Come on. Yeah. It ain't enough room in here for me to shout. I go straight up to that ceiling. Thank God I'm not allowed to display body language in that extreme. I like it too, man. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> the Holy Ghost overshadowed the mother, the Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ, peace be upon them, and she became pregnant with child. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, cast a shadow. What color is a shadow? Oh, answer me. I don't hate you, answer me. Okay, black. Your original black man. You got it? Well, I can turn that piece down. Today, on this February 25, I didn't say 25th, on this February 25, 2007, our nose with our valence is as a fertile field being plowed for a soon abundant harvest in moral excellence and economic life increase. I promise you that. And God has authorized me to promise you that. Whether you know it or not, whether you believe it or not. Now I want to turn to another focus here. You, the United States uniqueness as a nation, or as a people more so than as a nation. And I give you another definition now, virility. Definition in the dictionary, manhood, manly vigor, vigor, V-I-G-O-R. Manhood, manly vigor. When, you, when we look at see the condition of our males, black brothers, when we see the condition of our males in this time that we're living in, That condition does not say to us manhood. That condition does not say to us manly vigor. Vigor means excited energy. Energy ready to accomplish things. We want another definition now. Transcendence. Definition, quote, extending beyond the limits of ordinary experience. Again, transcendence. Extending beyond the limits of ordinary experience. God says to us, he's the one who Chalakah created. Chalakah 
Fasawa. He created, and the condition of, of creation that he caused created equality and balance. Fasawa. Then he says, Qaddara Fahada. Qaddara Fahada. He empowered the human soul and intellect to achieve transcendency. Transcendency. We are marching, marching up the King's Highway. We are marching, marching, marching all the day with our Savior, the Universal King. Up the highway. We are ascending because we have been conditioned by a master teacher, WD-40. Huh? He has conditioned our soul, our sensitivity, our human sensitivity. He has conditioned our intellect. He has conditioned our essence, our valence, our taqwa and our fujur. He has conditioned it to ascend. Ah. And what is that ascension for? It is to give us height. Lift us up to the highest regions so we get the fullest picture of our life down here on this earth. Huh? And then come back down with a plan and a blueprint and be successful in rising up a great people who will have community life excellence. Allahu Akbar, God is the greatest. As to where Mr. W.D. Forty found us, and then see how his doings, his works, have influenced our life to bring Elijah Muhammad, whose education was just three years, in a time when education for blacks was nothing in Georgia when he was a boy. Only three years of formal education. And Mr. Farrar saw in him great intelligence, great worth, and made him his supreme minister. That's what he called him in, at firstly, his supreme minister. Yes? and made my father's brother, my uncle Kalat, his supreme captain over the FOI. Yes? And if they would see how the works of, of that man that was put in the hands of my father to establish it and bring about progress, and how his son has come into his works not by my own choice, but by Mr. Farrar's plan. He told my father and mother, I, how, do, how would I know? They told me. He told my father and mother, said, keep your promise that you will raise him and let him, he used the word let, L E T, and let him help us in this work. So that's what I was told as a boy. That language passes by a boy. A boy doesn't have enough developed in, uh, uh, mind and experience to really register that kind of language. So when he told me it didn't register on me, not on my mind, and not on my feelings. You think I felt as a child, mm, that's great. I'm going to be a great man. God knows that never touched me. Nothing like that ever touched me. But when I look at my life now, 
See my Imam W.D. Muhammad in the Vatican as a guest of Pope Paul, uh, Pope Paul II, John Paul II. And with people, as far as you can look, there are people standing all in the streets everywhere. Yes? And I'm the only Muslim leader there. The one that they thought was not a true Muslim. Huh? Praise be to Allah. I'm the only one there representing Islam from America. Only one. And when I look now at the invitation that just came to me on my desk from the Wisdom University. It's called the Wisdom University. And its representatives and supporters include the son of John F. Kennedy. I mean, the, the, the son of Robert Kennedy. Yes, Robert Kennedy Jr. And many others, perhaps, among them, some of more, more notoriety than Robert Kennedy. Yes, and they invited me there. They invited me there to, to see what I got in me? No, they invited me there because they like what they saw and see in me. And they didn't ask, how do I know that? I know that because they're not asking me to just come there. The president of the organization told me that we are not wanting you just to come for one time. We're hoping that you will join us for a long time. When I became minister, see, people study important things that appear on the terrain of the United States of America or anywhere. They're international minded people that watch the terrain constantly to see what is developing on the terrain. And if they see something important to them, they will try to make contact with it. Yes. So they knew the Nation of Islam. This was immediately after I became leader. And as soon as the news hit the media that the son of Elijah Muhammad, Wallace D. Muhammad, had become, become the leader of the Nation of Islam, I received from the International Society of Metaphysics an invitation to join them. An invitation to join them. Now these, the ones sent that invitation, I see them now as angels. Angels and, and men. Angels saying, let us take this new child and bring him into our society and prepare him to be a great successful leader. We see that whoever gave them that language knew the language of metaphysics. So we would like to take this new leader and prepare him for his future. Allah wouldn't let my spirit go that way. I never answered them. And angels don't follow you up when you turn them down. They know why, and they leave you to your own spirit. And I thank them for being angels. But this invitation, I, will, I have accepted. I will not turn it down. And if I see opportunity to work with them, I'm going to work with them for the benefit of all mankind. Oh, you're going to leave us? No. Being with you is what got me the invitation. I'm going to stay with you and get more invitations. 
<laughs> one, one of the leaders that I met with, a female, in my uh, tra of travel and uh, in my uh, answering appointments and invitations. It was a big high-level meeting, and this uh, European woman, I don't like to say white, it just perpetuates racism. I like to say European and American. I like to say black American, uh, African American, African American, that's what I prefer, because it doesn't uh, influence the perpetuation of racism. It acts as a healing agent when you take the charge words out. All right. Uh, yes. So she, we were just, we were leaving the meeting that we had, and she came up to me. Now I knew I had enough acquaintance for, with her for her not to be insulting. We were considered each considering each other friends. So she had, she had the right to come up to me the way she did. She said, "Imam Muhammad, white woman, European American." She said, "Imam." I said that for your benefit, white woman. For I know white means more than European to you. The expression, the expression white woman means a lot more than European American to you. I'm talking to you Mandingos out there. So she said to me, she said, hey, ma'am, when are you going to leave your community? They can't appreciate you. Isn't that something? When are you going to leave your community? They can't appreciate you. Now you that are able to, you, you have the experience and the knowledge. Why don't you work harder to raise the level of intelligence in our community? Some of you are afraid to see your community graduate. You're afraid to see your community elevated in the knowledge. Because you're a piece of stoker coal. I ain't here to hurt anybody. <laughs> so don't start your cheerleader stuff here. <laughs> you can't influence me. I'm not here to hurt anybody. Now I believe, yes, we are on the United States of America's uniqueness and not referring to the government more than I'm referring to the American people. America's const constitution, doctrine that is, has a virility that gives it a constant transcendence for prevailing against the troubled times. If you had the insight that many have who have studied our Constitution, especially the language of the Founding Fathers, you would have a better, a much better appreciation and respect for the United States of America and for its people. Is there any evidence that America has that nature in its doctrine and in its people who live by that doctrine or live or stand by that doctrine. Yes, there is. The time of Warren Harding, Warren G. Harding, the time of Warren G. Harding was a time, a bad time for our government. There was great corruption in our government. 
Behind that, almost immediately behind that period, came the Roaring Twenties. If you know something of the Roaring Twenties, it was a time similar to this time when the tendency in the people is to just let go and have fun and let lust take over their lives. A similar time, the Roaring Twenties. And also, following that, almost at the same time, the Wall Street crash. But these terrible events coming like one behind another, rapid fire, did not prevail over the Constitution's doctrinal virility. No, did not prevail. Praise be to Allah. So there's a constancy, there's a constancy in the life of this nation, the United States of America. There's that erratic thing too, but there's the constant energy for the preservation of the nation, the government, order, and the American people. The prophet was, was, had revelation given to him, guidance given to him, to give us scholarly insight so we would find the tools for building our world that will stand by the best of worlds and endure for as long as the earth abides. Those tools in the Quran, in the son of the Prophet, in his uswa, his, his human na nature and life as a model. God says, for all who believe in God and the last day. It didn't say for Muslims. It said for all who believe in, in, uh, in, in, in God and the last day. I mean, they believe in God. And they believe in being accountable to God. The last day brings to your mind the judgment. They believe in God and they are conscious of the, of the judgment. They believe in being accountable to their God, their Lord, Allah, the creator of everything. So the fujur and the taqwa, wa alhamaha, fujuraha. And the God that created the soul created it to created it with an agent to carry its fujur and its taqwa, its energy and principle for progressing it. So it goes outward into the societies of mankind. And it's taqwa, so it go, ascends upward to higher regions of consciousness, in consciousness and consciousness, so that it becomes equipped to come back down, carry out this responsibility to its God to improve the life, the community life of mankind on this planet Earth. 